Hi, welcome to another episode on Power On Channel. I'd just like to take a look at this uh, unit today, not really from its performance point of view, because there's quite a few videos out there showing this Rui Dang portable power supply, uh, benchtop power supply if you like. Um, but what, um, I find it really quite useful, but obviously out of any sort of enclosure, it tends to wander around on the desk. I have to sort of like blue tack this down, so it's even the wrong way up, so I have to blue tack that down and sort of fiddle with things. And so I noticed on uh, their website that I've actually got a, um, an enclosure for this. And so I've uh, put my purchase order in, got the delivery, and so let's see if we can't assemble this. Now this isn't a, an unboxing video, I'm not that keen on unboxing videos, but i just like to say that it was delivered uh, in the bubble wrap. The bubble wrap was inside a polystyrene case. Sorry for the rattling. Uh, so yeah, very well delivered, no, no dramas there. So it's a, a metal case. Room on the back for the uh, fan, um, your ins and your outs. Probably not as convenient as you'd probably like in terms of ins and outs. You probably want that on the front. But um, really what I've got this for is so that it doesn't sort of wander around too much on, on the bench. And it's nice and compact as well. Um, so anyway, looks like we've got some more components inside. Let's just see what we've got here. We've got a couple of small Phillips heads. Shouldn't complain, it's well packed. A little PCB there. Looks like we've got a switch for the back. Various posts and what have you. So, yeah, looks like we've got um, two negatives, two positives. Uh, four rubber feet switch. Uh, actual fan for the casing, so the device actually has a fan directly heat connected to the uh, heat sink here, but uh, looks like they've um, provided a second fan for the case, which is great. And a couple of connecting leads. Not too sure what the connecting leads are needed for, given that um, they've already come with that, but I might discover that as I go along. And some small DC wires there, obviously the fan will need powering. So, um, screws and spade terminals and what looks to be a small PCB here. Showing in positive in negative. It looks like um, possibly some sort of protection circuit or is it the driver for the case fan? Anyway, um, let's get this put together. So I've unpacked things a little bit more and I've been to the website to see if there are any assembly instructions because there weren't any sent inside the box or with the unit. Uh, sure enough on the website there's a, a number of pictures and diagrams which show you how to put this thing together which is great, they're very clear. So it's at this point I thought I would stop the video audio and do a little bit of narration uh, because <laughs> Yeah, apart from um, being very diligent, which is very unlike me, and reading the instructions on the website, following them to the letter, cutting the wires to length, terminating them with the provided crimp terminals, getting hold of the um, fan, terminating, cutting those leads, terminating it down, and then mounting the fan inside. All in my vain hope, as it turned out, um, to be a good preparation for actually installing the power supply itself. But when it came to installing the power supply, uh, this happened. Oh, well, this job, um, this simple job, <laughs> just seems to be getting... Uh... So I followed the instructions to the letter, and uh, but I, I really should have looked at the board in uh, more detail. And I, I, and if this thing's got connectors, but and it doesn't have any spade terminals, 
as per the instructions currently on the website, this is how they say they should do it for this model, which is the 3012, uh, DSB 3012. Clearly not right. Even if I chop these uh, spade terminals off, uh, they're going to be too short. Both this negative, this positive, this uh, ne uh, positive here is all going to be too short to fit into the uh, connector. So I'm going to stop the camera and I'm going to ch change all these out and we'll get back to it. Anyway, after a bit of um, swearing, pulling things apart, putting them back together again, I have indeed um, put some wires directly into these pluggable terminals, same on this side, and to redo these both. So we're now ready to put the PCB in position, the four holes underneath. The PCB already comes delivered with the plastic feet and um, these got a, a little, I think probably an M3 screw thread on the underneath. So those just fit in nice and easily. At least one part of this project is straightforward. And finally things are starting to look okay. Everything's nice and secure. All the posts are in position, they're all nice and secure. And you've got the fan in position. Uh, with the on-off switch. As I say, I prefer to have the on-off switch so it's down is on. That's more logical to me. Uh, I know some countries have the convention the other way up, but uh, I prefer it that way up. So we're just really ready for the display and the cover. This should be fairly straightforward. Let's bring this into the centre of the shot. Again, it's a really nice fit. Uh, it just clips in very nicely. And I did unplug these earlier. This is the key. This is the LCD. And that's... Uh, shown marked on the back of the PCB and then final assembly well let's um, let's plug it in and try it first eh? So we've got a couple of leads here coming from my benchtop power supply and so we'll go into the in Positive and negative, that's correct polarity. I won't connect anything on the output just yet. A little bit of glare from here, let's see how we go. And let me zoom in a little bit. So, yeah, everything um, seems okay there. I've got uh, 16 volts coming in from the power supply, obviously nothing going out, everything seems to be okay. This, uh, I know, sorry, zoom out again, you can see that the um, fan is working fine, no smoke has come out, so um, I'm going to assume everything's okay there, I'm just going to power it off. Disconnect and do the final assembly. And you know, I'm having to say that the, the, the box actually, so the clipping in of that doesn't seem very positive. That seems to have popped out. Maybe the plastic tabs on the, the back could do with a just pushing out a little bit, give them a bit more spring. But the finish on the box is quite nice. I've got the grey here. Apparently, uh, looking at the website, you can get it in black as well. Um, and yeah, it's nice and quite small and dinky. The only thing is, yeah, you've got the outputs sort of 
and everything on the back. So it keeps the inputs nice and tidy, but um, you, I suppose have to, might have to peer around the back when you're using to make sure you've got your inputs and outputs plugged into the, the right part. So let me just finish these off and we'll come back. That's all the six screws nice and tight. The actually the two that um, are holding the box together as a, in a parcel are sort of sur surplus. There's, there's two extra. Um, the only other thing is uh, is to pop on these little rubber feet. We'll put them reasonably close to the corners. Stop it sliding around on the bench. Now this one is a little bit difficult with this here, so I might just go just inbound with these two. So I'm going to be pressing the uh, buttons on here. So yeah, that's nice and stable. It's, it's not pushing around on on the bench top at all. It's uh, nice and squishy. That's great. Okay, well let's. Um, if you've not seen this in operation, I'll just give you a two minute demo. So I'll just get some connected up and we'll just see it operating. Okay, I've set up this star LED. I'm not too sure whether it's a one watt or a three watt unit and it's not mounted on a heat sink or anything. So I'm not going to drive this too hard. It's just a little demonstration of this unit. I'm not going to go through a full demonstration. There are some good videos out there particularly the one uh, done by Julian Eilert. You need to search up his channel if, you, if you're not subscribed already. And I think he did a review uh, some months ago on this uh, unit, or a unit very similar to this, because Rui Deng do a number of units, but they use this common interface. Uh, this particular unit I've got here is... Um, here are the instructions. They are actually in, instruction, uh, in English as well. But it's the... Um, 12 amp 0 to 32 volts uh, unit that I've installed here, DSP, DPS, sorry, 3012. Anyway, without more mumbling and grumbling, let me just switch it on. You can set up the voltage or the ampage, so it can be constant current or constant voltage. Um, this is already set up to 5 volts, uh, 0.2 of an amp. Let me just bring that down. Um, yeah, so you just click on the amp button here, then scroll wheel down, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, that'll be good, just 0 0.1 of an amp. And then to switch the unit on, you just press the on-off button, or rather to switch the output on. And there we go, the, the lamp is lit quite dimly, thankfully, so it hasn't flooded out the uh, video. Uh, you can change it on the fly, you just grab hold of the uh, uh, thing, it's, back up. it's still on ampage, is it? No, it is now, and then we just uh, move my hand out of the way. Five, six, seven, eight, nine point two of an amp, and you can see it's it's climbing up. It's actually in constant current mode. Um, you can change the voltage if you want by just drag jogging over there. If you want to change the voltage in more than one hundredth segments, you can go into tenths or whole volts. So we've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten volts, say. Uh, but yeah, it's it's clamped at um, 0 0.2 or 0.19. It's indicated, but uh, 0.21 on the set point. So yeah, that's great. The the unit um, mounted in this box, I think, works really well. It's a small footprint, but it's big enough not to move around on the desk. You know, when you're pressing the buttons. Um, what do I think of the package overall? Yep, it's well put. Um, well manufactured, I would say well, well put together, but um, that, that's, that's what I did. Um, nice set of components, no complaints except for the instructions. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have looked at it in a bit more detail. I, I was looking on the website and they actually very clear, nice photographs and all the rest of it. And I just bowled straight into it, cutting up bits of wire, assuming it was going to be right for my installation, but uh, clearly it wasn't. I don't know whether the unit I've got here now is, is about 9 months or 12 months old. I don't know whether they've changed to the spade connectors or, or what, but uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I just had to cut up some extra bits of wire and did some extra soldering. Uh, 
if I checked beforehand, as I say, I would have uh, avoided those pitfalls. Um, anyway, look, I hope you've enjoyed watching it, and I'll see you on the next one. Ta-ta for now.